So let's take a introduction look at PyTorch. We're going to set up a basic tabular neural network, both for classification and regression. I have code here at the beginning of the file, the notebook set up so that you can map your Google Drive. We really do not need to map the Google Drive for this particular example, but I put them at the top of all of the material in this course. So we're gonna go ahead and jump down here and we're going to initialize the device that we're going to make use of for this. So on Colab, you can do runtime and then change runtime type. They recently changed this. This is actually kind of cool. You can pick your specific hardware accelerator. You can pick the CPU, an A100 GPU, which is fairly advanced. I'm gonna use the very basic T4. I am using Google Colab Pro Plus. You do not need to use the paid version. You'll get a basic GPU that you can use that should be sufficient for everything in the course. If you wanna pay the money, you can get the more advanced GPUs. And I do make use of that. So we're gonna run this here and you can see I'm supporting really three different hardware types. MPS is Apple, so Apple M1, M2. If you have an Intel Mac, I don't even own one of those anymore, so I don't, I don't even know what will necessarily happen. You'll probably be using a CPU of some sort. CUDA is if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, and in this case, it's an NVIDIA GPU running actually on Colab. You can also run those on your local environments if you have a GPU installed, or you can run it entirely on CPU. The vast majority of all the class material should work on MPS and CPU. I've tested it as extensively as I can. There's a few things that do require CUDA, and I will point those out as we get into them. But you can see here we're using CUDA. Here I demonstrate that you can do some basic sort of linear algebra with this, with PyTorch. So here I run this, and I'm doing a matrix multiply of these two matrices and it's coming out as 12. It's that matrix times that. And here I'm really just multiplying a row matrix by a column matrix to, to put those, those together. You can definitely play with this and, and see how you're able to do other types of multiplications here. You can do other linear algebra like subtractions. You can set the values directly and then uh, also do a subtract. But we're gonna look at a more advanced example because I wanna show you that you can do something that is not neural network with PyTorch. So for this one, we're gonna look at the Mandelbrot example. The Mandelbrot example, you can see, this is the classic, classic example. You can zoom as far as you want to into this. I have two other videos that I'm linking here. You don't necessarily need to understand the Mandelbrot for this course, but I do have one where I explain the mathematics behind how you actually calculate it. And then a second one, where I show how to do zooms and, and go, go into this. So lots of fun stuff there, but you'll notice we cycle through various shades of blue and that's what we're using these trig functions for. We're not really doing anything trig related here. We're just dealing with the kind of sinusoidal sort of wave that the sine and cosine are able to produce for us. That's what the render does. It basically takes the, it takes a matrix of values of basically how many times a, a value orbits as it as it goes through the entire all the values that are in view and this Mandelbrot helper this is the relatively simple calculation that is done and we're calculating if things diverge or if they they do not again look at look at the how the Mandelbrot is calculated video if you're interested in seeing exactly how this is is calculated. We'll define these here and then we will run this this part and it actually regenerates that Mandelbrot that you can see there. Now let's look at a simple tabular data example. We're gonna do the auto miles per gallon data set. This is a data set for cars from the 1970s, so a long, long time ago. This is how you read in this auto miles per gallon data set and these are highly fuel efficient, inefficient cars, the 1970s. They were gas guzzlers back then. So we'll run this. It's going to run, it's gonna load the auto miles per gallon in Pandas, just like we've seen in previous videos focused on pandas. And we're gonna use these seven values to calculate what we think the miles per gallon are. We're gonna train it based on rows where we know what the miles per gallon is, and we're gonna to try to calculate it and see what we can, can calculate there. And we're gonna have an X and Y. X are these seven inputs that we are going to use. And then Y is the output, the actual miles per gallon 
that we're calculating. And then we go to this part. This is where we're creating the actual neural network. There's two ways, well, a bunch of ways, but two primary ways that you can create neural networks in PyTorch. And here we're using the sequence. So we're going to have these linear layers. These are all fully connected layers between each other. We're starting with the shape of the input. Those, so those are the seven values that we're using to calculate. Going to 50 hidden neurons, the output from which goes through a rectified linear unit, then 50 goes to 25. So it's 50 hidden neurons on first hidden layer, 25 on the next, and rectified linear at the end of each. And make sure that these numbers match because you have 50 outbound, you need 50 inbound, 25 outbound, five inbound. And then one lonely output neuron that is the regression value. The loss function, how we evaluate errors, that is going to be mean square error loss. That's common for regression neural network. And then the optimizer, what's going to actually adjust those weights for us is the atom optimizer, learning rate of 0.1. We'll see later, we can even adjust that learning rate as we go. If you set the learning rate too small, it won't learn anything. If you set the, or learn very, very slowly, if you set the learning rate too high, then as it's looking through that gradient space, it's going to potentially jump over a perhaps a, a, a solution because it's it's just doing too coarse of a cert. Uh, but so it, it's a balance and we'll see that we can use a schedule to define those later. This is the actual training. We're using batch training. So we are looping over a thousand epochs. An epoch is one complete pass over the training set. And each of these is one batch. So we're going to zero the gradients. These are big old batches that I'm using here. Later, we're gonna get into mini batches, which will tend to work better on, on some of the more advanced neural networks, but this works just fine for this one. We're gonna zero the gradients because it's the beginning of a batch. We are going to flatten the output from the neural network. Uh, that's just necessary so that it becomes a simple vector that we can deal with. And then we are going to run it through the loss function to see what the error was, the difference on all 1,000, or not 1,000, however many, there's 200 and something cars in that data set, however many of those there are. And then we're gonna do this whole thing a thousand times for training. Backward calculates the actual gradients and then step is what actually causes it to modify. Modify your weights. So you're, you're running the entire training set through in this batch and then updating it. So that's why you have to zero those gradients or they would simply keep accumulating and that would that would not work at all. Every 100 epochs, we print out what the helps to run this first. And then we run this and you can see the values. It gets down to a lower loss. Again, these are mean square errors. The root mean square error would be the square root of this. So it, it's, it's doing pretty good, pretty good there. And then we can see that we can predict for individual cars and we can also then calculate the root mean square error. This is using NumPy to calculate it. So about 3.7, that's, that's about average. I sometimes get in the twos like I did last time. And then the root mean square error here, this is calculated entirely through PyTorch. If you wanna use this in conjunction with other model types, like maybe scikit-learn, I would use this one. If you're dealing 100% just with PyTorch, I would do this, but I show you both. And then we can print it out for individual car. That was regression, we were predicting a number. Let's deal with classification where we're predicting a class. This is like a multiple choice test, but you would pick one like B. The computer is going to give you probabilities for each. Probability is 0.8. That tells you that it's the most sure that it's 0.8. These should line up mostly to some to one, Sometimes rounding causes them not to exactly, but the softmax function that we're using on it. So we are going to run this pandas code where we load in the actual value, these four values for each of the iris flowers that we're trying to classify for. There's three different species that we're dealing with, four different measures, and the species, those are textual. So what we're gonna do for those is we're going to use, we're, we're gonna basically use index encoding here with the fit transform for the species. That's going to take the three different text values, assign one to zero, one to one, and the other to two. And PyTorch, when you're using classification, 
it takes that 0, 1, 2 and converts it into the dummy variables that you would like to have for the output. It doesn't do that on the input, but it does do it on the output. When you have input coming in, it's your responsibility to convert certain fields into dummy variable. The loss, the criterion is going to same, same sort of thing. Cross entropy loss, which works really well for classification. We're going to use the atom optimizer, just like before with a learning rate of 0 0.01. And then we're gonna loop through a thousand epochs, just like we did before. No difference here at all. One big batch for each epoch and it trains and gets it down really relatively low there. We'll print out the species. These are the species that we're dealing with coming right from the data set. So one becomes zero, one, and two. Here you can see the actual probabilities. It is putting these in that shows you the actual probabilities in scientific notation. If you want to see them without, you can do this and then you see them with without. You can predict these actually as the indexes of which, which one you're dealing with. And then you can actually see the, the classes. And again, these can be, these can be negative numbers. It is dealing with the, the largest, the, the largest values of these because it's, it's training on, it's training on the magnitude. What you're generally going to look at is the actual class that you, you're putting it into. We can calculate the accuracy. The accuracy is quite high, 98%. And then we can print it out for an individual flower or for several flowers just by passing those values in. Thank you for watching the video and we'll continue onward with PyTorch. So subscribe to the channel and click the, click the like if you found this useful. Any questions, post in the comments and let me know.